In this video, we're going to look at factoring a squared minus b squared. This is a very special factoring pattern and it has a very special name. This is called the difference, difference meaning subtraction, of two squares. Okay, a squared minus b squared, each being squares. We're gonna look at the difference of those two. So let's first take a look at some numbers to get an understanding of this. Um, if I think of 36 minus 25, just as a subtraction problem, that's pretty easy to evaluate. 36, take away 25, 11. But I picked special numbers on purpose. 36 is a perfect square. It happens to be six squared. And 25 is also a perfect square. It's five squared. And if you subtract those, you should get 11. Now, of course, you can't just do six minus five. That would give you one. So you have to follow the order of operations. But there is something that can be done, which is kind of cool. You can multiply six times six to give you the 36, and you can multiply five times five to give you the 25. Watch what happens though when you put a plus and you put a minus. So um, in the order of operations, we have six plus five being first in the parentheses, 11, and six minus five being one, and 11 times one is 11. Now, uh, where did that come from? Where does this just arise? And there is a reason for it, and I'll show you. It comes from the distributive property. If we multiply this out, six times six, that's the, the 36 right there. If you do six times negative five, and then turn around and do five times six, those are opposites, they cancel out. And then lastly, five times negative five is the second one. So in general, let's look at what happens with the algebra. In the algebra, if you have quantity A plus B times quantity A minus B, if you distribute this out, you'll get A times A, a squared, a times negative b, negative ab, and then distributing this, b times a, we'll write it in alphabetical order, it'll be ab, and then b times negative b, negative b squared. Notice that these two middle terms are opposites, they cancel out, and we're just left with a squared minus b squared. So this part on the left is called a sum and difference formula. You're basically multiplying a sum, a plus b times a difference, and you end up with this example, this answer right here on the right, this is the difference of two squares that I named earlier. So what you wanna do is recognize when you have one of these and factor it back to there. Let's take a look at two examples to kind of demonstrate that. Okay, first one, let's say you're asked to factor a polynomial with just two terms, 25 X squared, minus 49. I know I've used the number 25 already as recognizable square. So you're supposed to recognize, hey, the 25 X squared is a perfect square. That's five X times five X. 49 is also a perfect square. That's seven times seven. It's one of these type. So you should be able to factor it. And the way you'll do that is you'll take the square root of each one of these. Okay, the square root of 25 X squared, that will be five X times five X. We'll give you 25 X squared. And similarly for 49, it will be seven times seven. Then you'll just need to do the sum and the difference. You'll need to do one plus, one minus. And that's exactly how it factors. The reason this works out is the two middle terms drop and you're just left with the original. Let's take a look at one more example, something maybe a little bit larger. How about 81 X squared minus 64 Y squared. In this case, 81 and 64 are perfect squares and so are X squared and Y squared. So we will get nine X times nine X, is 81x squared, and 8y times 8y is 64y squared, plus, minus, done. That is how you factor a difference of two squares. One last, one last special factoring pattern. You might run into something that doesn't look to be special until the very end. Let me show you some, somewhat what I mean by that. What if you're asked to factor x squared plus 12x plus 36. This looks like something from a previous video. When you do that, again, remember we're focusing on the first term, x times x, and the last term. And there's many ways to get um, 36, but the one that ends up working is six. And that's because six times six is 36 and six plus six is 12. When you get a repeat like this, you are welcome to take one more additional step and rewrite it as x plus six squared. It's known as a perfect square trinomial at the beginning and notice it ends up being a perfect square. That'll be important in a future lesson. Hope you learned a little bit more about special factoring patterns.